Nick here, hope you guys are doing well. And what if I told you that we haven't seen a genuine innovation to commercial flight in over 60 years? In fact, the Boeing 707 of the 1950s, often revered as the hallmark of commercial aeronautics, was just as fast as today's planes. Sure, now you have six inches more of legroom and your peanuts are honey roasted instead of salted, but the truth is that politics and the economy of flight have made it nearly impossible to traverse our skies any faster. Air travel was once the giddy fancy of the world. We admired it as the fashionable, enviable thing to do, and it was just an experience you had to behold for yourself. And it's since devolved into an industry that's very ignorant of change. Today, I want to talk about why air travel still sucks, our fleeting attempt to revolutionize it, and where we can go from here. What follows is a maelstrom of politics, finances, and game-changing aerodynamics. Let's check it out. Commercial flight is something that we've all come to take for granted, whether or not you've actually been on a plane. It's incredibly safe, reasonably cost-effective, and much faster than any possible alternative. It's single-handedly revolutionized transportation, warfare, logistics, and economics. Our post-war obsession with commercial flight legitimized the industry as one of, if not the most important infrastructural change of the 20th century, and the sad part is it continues to rule our lives, but it hasn't gotten any better. Well, that's kind of sort of not really a lie. Let me explain. Time to introduce supersonic flight. In the early 1970s, the British and the French got together and slapped a turbojet on a lean fighter jet looking aircraft and called it Concorde. With a top speed of over 1300 miles an hour, the Concorde could travel at Mach 2 and traverse the Atlantic in under four hours. It was remarkable. It was the coolest and the sexiest and the most revolutionary addition to commercial flight in a very long time. 27 years of operation, dozens of records broken, and a design that drew any type of headline possible. We had it all under control. And then suddenly, they stopped flying them. So what happened? Why doesn't every airline today have a fleet of Concords that they fly on a daily basis? Well, for one, the Concord was incredibly expensive and loud. Ticket prices were near robbery and the plane burned more fuel on its way from the terminal to the runway than an Airbus A320 did on a full flight to Paris. Not to mention the sonic boom that it created was so deafening that several governments had to ban the Concorde from flying over many overland routes. Couple that with egregious servicing costs and even less demand, and you can see how after only two decades of operation, a miracle technology was dealt the boot. And now it's sitting in a fancy exhibit somewhere in an equally fancy museum. Now, some people might say that we never needed a supersonic aircraft in the first place, right? If the shoe fits, wear it. And to that, I very much disagree. I think that the ideal infrastructure for any nation is one where the best possible technology pervades an industry and forces everyone to tag along. Now, don't get me wrong, that's very hard. The fundamental laws of economics forbid it and dependencies formed by politics, competition, greed, and so much more make it even more of a prohibitive desire. But it's not impossible. Look at what the iPhone was able to do. They brought the best possible technology to market and they forced everyone else to play catch up. Now to wrap up, air travel is one of those things that's so hard to tap into simply because it's so tied down by other industries as well. Thankfully, a lot of companies are not deterred by that like Boom and they promise to bring back faster, safer, and quieter supersonic travel than all of their predecessors. In fact, they've received 76 pre-orders of their XB1 supersonic model and unfortunately, while all there is to show for it is a computer-generated press video, it's incredibly promising news as they plan to do testing early next year. I am so looking forward to a true revolution to air travel and it's an only a matter of time. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for making it this far. Click my links down below to read my Huffington Post articles and follow me on social media when you can. Thanks, guys.